Fire and ice. That contradiction flows through history and it flows through technology. We drink it in. The West began using heat to distill wine into brandy in the 12th century, and the Chinese had been freezing the water out of wine to make brandy since the first century. Two very different roads to the same product. Now another liquid product, also produced with heat and cold. Liquid natural gas, LNG. So many different processes and technologies can create LNG. We have trade-offs to consider and choices to make. The process names barely hint that there are differences. Each process for creating LNG is a unique arrangement of equipment and choice of refrigerants. Some processes are built around specific types and makes of equipment. Others allow more choice. The owners of these processes know that every user faces different site conditions, and users have their own natural gas feedstock and production requirements, so process owners propose custom configurations based on the buyer's needs. But three elements are common to every liquefaction process, heat exchangers, compressors, and refrigerants. A heat exchanger takes heat from the natural gas and warms a refrigerant. A compressor pressurizes the refrigerant and moves it along to a condensing heat exchanger. Then, the condensed liquid refrigerant expands through a valve. Finally, it cools enough in another exchanger to begin the cycle all over again. Three major heat exchanger types dominate the LNG industry. A plate fin exchanger is an assembly of layers of aluminum fins and separator plates. We install the assembly along with other equipment in an insulated container called a cold box. Keeping all this cold lowers operating costs and gives operators more flexibility during steady and changing conditions. Plate fin exchangers have been used for years in the petroleum industry. They are compact, economical, and they can be built quickly. Coil-wound exchangers have been around even longer. Here, a hollow cylindrical shell is filled with thousands of coiled tubes. The size of these modern-day descendants of the 19th century locomotive boiler can be large, and they operate all the way up to 250 times atmospheric pressure. Fin-fan coolers, the third type, are used in LNG plants to condense refrigerants. They're a lot like the fan-cooled condenser on our outdoor air conditioning units. The compressors for the refrigeration stages need power, either from electric motors or gas turbines. The more LNG we want to produce, the more power we need. It takes 13 kilowatts to produce one ton of LNG per day. Of course, we can push that only so far before LNG equipment becomes too large to be practical. However we drive the compressors, we face different efficiencies and costs. Today, modern gas turbines are proving to be the most efficient drivers. Each LNG technology favors a different approach to refrigerants. Some processes use pure refrigerants, propane, ethylene, methane, in multiple refrigeration cycles. Pure refrigerants can be a smart choice when the composition of the raw natural gas is likely to vary. They provide flexibility for plant operators. Other processes blend pure components into a single refrigerant whose composition can be varied. It can cool natural gas in fewer stages. It's efficient, although it requires close control. Jean-Paul Sartre once said, we are our choices. Choose the right LNG process and technologies, and our prospects are bright. Overlook something, and we could face decades of buyer's remorse. World energy needs are growing, and more of the world wants LNG. Meeting that demand means making difficult choices, and we have so many incentives to make the right choices.